Topic two, foreign currency transactions. All right, gotta love it when the topic is the chapter. So when we talk about foreign currency transactions, let's look at the complexities. To know how to account for these, you need to know a few key important terms. One is functional currency. This refers to the currency of the primary economic environment in which the entity operates. Then you have the presentation currency, the currency in which the entity presents its financial results. You also have the recording currency. This is the currency in which the entity records their transactions. These terms are detailed further in subsequent chapter topics. So for now, what we'll do is assume that we are working with a company where the functional presentation and recurring recording currencies are in the Canadian dollars. This will, again, make more sense as we go through some examples, both this week and next week. Let's look at some types of transactions. The primary transactions we are concerned with are most common in foreign exchange or FX accounting. These are import or export transactions. So when a company sells something to or buys something from a foreign company and financing transaction, that is when the company borrows or lends in a different currency. The problem here is typically introduced by the time period between when the transaction is agreed to and when the transaction is settled. So for example, when um, somebody agrees to buy uh, some inventory and receives the inventory, and then when they pay for the inventory's invoice. Since we are assuming the presentation, functional, and recording currency of the company are in Canadian dollars, the following examples are showing the functional currency translation method. So when you took Intermediate Financial Accounting 2 with me, um, you likely saw, well, you did see, hopefully you remember, um, that we established and reevaluated foreign currency transactions, and we're doing it the same way here as we did there. The only difference is that there, we were focused on primarily recording and reevaluating the liability as of the balance sheet date, whereas now we are going to be paying attention to both revenues and expenses, which have offsetting accounts receivable and accounts payable. So we're gonna have a broader scope here. We will look at a purchase of inventory from a foreign supplier as an example. On December 1st, 2019, a Canadian company purchases a shipment of t-shirts from a Norwegian supplier. The t-shirts cost 10,000 Norwegian crowns. Payments will be delivered in 60 days. The exchange rate on the date of purchase was one Norwegian crown equals 19 cents Canadian dollars and one Norwegian crown equals 20 cents Canadian on the date of payment. The exchange rate on December 31st, the company's year end was one Norwegian crown is equal to 21 cents Canadian dollar. The supplier was paid on January 30th, 2020. So let's look at the transactions. First, on December 1st, 2019, when the inventory is purchased, we need to set up the inventory amount and we need to do so in Canadian dollars. So we take the 10,000 Norwegian crowns times by 19 cent Canadian, which was the exchange rate on the date in which the transaction occurred. So now we have $1,900 Canadian inventory, debit inventory, credit accounts payable. So here, really, we're going through really basic first year accounting just the amount in which we are doing it slightly changes. So then, because the inventory, because this AP isn't settled until 60 days later, and we have a year end in between when it was um, started and when it'll be settled, we need to do a revaluation of the monetary item that is accounts payable for the closing rate at year end. So we are right now looking at the difference between what the rate was at year end, which was 21 cents, and the rate in which it was recorded at previously, which was 19 cents. So the difference is two cents times by the 10,000 uh, crowns. So our impact is $200. How do we know if it's a debit or a credit to a loss or a gain account? Well, we bought something at 19 cents and we're gonna have to pay it at 21 cents. That's bad. <laughs> so here we have a loss of that $200. 
and we need to bump up our accounts payable. So you can also just say, okay, what was our old accounts payable? 1900. What's our new accounts payable? 2100. What's the difference? Well, we have to increase it by 200, which is a credit by 200. And then the offset is to the income statement, which is a debit FX uh, loss of 200. All right, so now on January 30th, the pay payable is revalued again, and then we settle it. So we do it in two separate pieces. First, we revalue it. So going the same thing that we did at year end, except now at year end it was worth 21 cents, and now it's worth 20 cents. So we need to go from 2100 to 2000. We need to decrease AP by $100. So debit AP $100, and the offset is to FX gain on the income statement. So because FX gains and losses, when your functional and um, presentation and, it's, um, and recording currency is all in Canadian dollars, it's all realized right away. Um, essentially, you're just a company in Canada buying stuff in another country. So everything has to flow through your income statement um, as soon as it happens. So at year ends, we are revaluating and any FX gains or losses are realized right away. Okay, and then um, what is our AP on our balance sheet after all of this? Well, it's at 2000. So then how do we get rid of it? We debit AP by 2000 because we paid it for at $2,000. Time for a question. Oh, and by the way, I didn't go super, super into depth um, because this was covered in Intermediate Financial Accounting too, but feel free to send me an email and we can always talk it over. Time for a question. On Feb 1st, a Canadian company purchases 4,000 screwdrivers from a German supplier for 2,000 euros. The company's year end is March 31st. The payment will be delivered on April 30th. The exchange rate on the date of the transaction is 1 euro equals $1.32 Canadian. And on March 31st, it is 1 euro is equal to 121 Canadian. On the date of payment, 1 euro is equal to $1.16 Canadian. What is the exchange gain or loss on revaluation at year end? Is it A, $220 FX gain, B, $220 FX loss, C, $320 exchange gain, or D, $320 exchange loss? The correct answer is A. Since the euro on March 31st buys less Canadian dollars than it did on Feb 1st, we know it will be a gain from a Canadian perspective. The difference between $1.32 and $1.21 is 11 cents. So a contract worth 2,000 euros will shift by $220 Canadian. All right, thank you so much. I will see you in the next one.